I mean, she would have to be like... Hey guys, this is Martin Wright from Margo's Dog Training. Today I'm going to show you three tricks. Three tricks that will help to engage your dog and help tire them out. Making it so that when you're working from home, your dog is not jumping up on your lap or pulling at your cuffs of your, your pants or trying to knock your hand off the keyboard as you're trying to do your work. Especially during this COVID-19 home uh, isolation. That's not the word I'm looking for. Home... I guess home isolation is the word I'm looking for. So uh, I got three tricks for you. They're gonna help you to build engagement with your dog and they're also gonna help you to learn the age old trick or age old training concept of luring the dog, moving the dog to where you want them to be by enticing them with treats, food, toys, games, etc., etc. Once you master luring, you'll be able to use that technique in many aspects of dog training. As a matter of fact, it is one of the most important techniques that we have as dog trainers, dog handlers, and dog owners. All right, and then isolation. That's not the word I'm looking for. Home. Shelter in place, social distancing, isolation. So what are we going to be talking about? We're going to be talking about luring your dog. We're going to be doing the spin. We're going to be doing over and under. And finally, we're going to be doing touch. Work, kiddo. Yes. All right, guys. Here we go. This is Itty Bit. Itty Bit is my three-year-old dog. She's going to be my demonstration dog for these activities today. Um, the first activity that we're going to do, the first trick, the first technique that we're going to use is the spin technique. Um, so what I do is I take a treat and I put it in between my fingers. I then reach down right in line with Dee Dee's no Itty's nose, Itty Bit, not Dee Dee Bones, nose, and I spin like that. And she goes around in a circle, right? I want her head and her back to be pretty much straight. So I start here and I spin her around. When I'm luring a dog, I hold the treat like that, right? So I have the treat in between my first finger and my second finger and the first knuckle. Um, if it's a flat treat, it fits perfectly just like that. If it's a round treat or a large treat and I put it in the same spot, you'll see that my hand is now open and the treat is not as stable. So I move it down in between my fingers before the first joint and then the treat is stable. Um, so that's how I handle the treats. And then from there, I just lure the dog around. Luring, it's important with luring that you keep your dog's interest. So if I go too fast, what, what, what you'll see Itty Bit do is, well, she knows the trick, so she spins anyway, but you'll see the dog just kind of, they turn and they just come back to, to their hand, come back to your hand. Like they'll turn their head this way and then they will see your hand on the other side rather than actually spinning through. So we have to make sure that we go the right speed and keep the dog's interest all the way around. So this is easy version spin, right? I'm real low right next to her nose, and she spins. Itty bit got that down. Um, medium version is I'm gonna be a little bit higher, and itty bit has that down, right? I could go a little higher. She has that pretty good. But as time goes on and I get more and more advanced, I want my, my hand really to do a little bit. In time, I wanna just be able to do this. I have not mastered that with itty bit yet, but um, this is a little harder. Right? There you go. A little harder. See here, this is a little, there you, here you go. Yeah, it's a little bit more difficult the higher that your hand becomes, but in time you will be able to just one finger and your dog will do it. Excellent. I like to do spins in both ways, both directions. Um, you will see that maybe your dog has an easier time doing it one way versus the other. If you have a large dog, this can be harder because you have to reach further in order to get them to spin. Super large dogs, you might try to use peanut butter on a spoon, 
because you get a long spoon. If I have a great date in front of me, I'm not going to be able to reach around his whole body. I get a spoon with peanut butter, and then I can extend my reach. There's many variations to this trick. I use this trick also when I'm walking a dog in the heel position in order to build engagement there. Excellent. Good job, itty bit. Good. Excellent. They will get a little dizzy, so you have to be careful. You have to give them many breaks. Okay, guys, so the second exercise that we're going to work on today is touch, right? Touch is a good exercise to build engagement and also to um, tire out your dog. So what I start with is I start with the treat just like I did in the spin where I have it in between my knuckles and my fingers here. And then I just bring it close to my dog. Yes, good girl. I bring it close to my dog's face. She t as soon as she touches, I say yes, and then I give the treat. Um, in the beginning, I don't want the dog to have to move too much, right? <laughs> Get up there. <laughs> She's very, very eager. And I put it really close to my dog's nose, so that way they don't have to, yes, she doesn't have to move much in order to be able to get um, the reward. But as time goes on, first thing I do is I don't use a treat. Yes, I don't have a treat in my hand, and then I give, it, give her that way. Yes. Yes. And I start to move, then I start to move my hands. Yes, further and further, so she has to do more and more in order to get to the position. Yes. So what's very important is this brush here. I decided to upgrade from the comb to the brush because, you know, the brush is actually nicer. It feels better. It feels better on the skin. It pulls a lot less. All right, anyway, back to, back to touching. So what happens is um, we're showing touch second stage. Second stage touch basically is I have the dog touch my hand, touch. Yes. And then I toss my treat. She runs over, and then I touch. Good. I like to move backwards a little bit, especially in the beginning when I'm teaching this. Touch. Yes. Good job. Excellent. And then in time, yes. Good girl. Very good. Yes. Good job, little one. And then from here, the next thing is to use the box place. Now, I could have another person and we could play touch back and forth where she's traveling great distances. Even outside, she can do this um, where she'll run back and forth between two people. But if there's not another person, I might use my place command, right? So that way she could go there and I could go touch. Good girl. Excellent. Place. Yes. And then maybe I'll go all the way out here. Touch. Yes. Place. And she could run back and forth in between that. So Frankie's gonna yell at me anytime now about being in the dark. <laughs> Just so you guys know. Bring balance to the force, not leave it in darkness. Okay guys, so we're about to start the trick three. The third trick, um, the third thing that we can use to build engagement, build a relationship between us and our dog, and also to tire them out. This one is called over, under. So really it's three and four, all right? So what do I do? What do I do first? Well, I hold my treat in between my fingers the same way that we did in the spin trick and in the touch trick. I have the treat in between my finger here in this hand, and then I lure my dog over my leg. When she's over, she gets the treat. I made sure I made myself nice and comfortable here. Excellent, she knows how to jump over already. So I'm gonna take my treat, pause down, and I'm luring her over, yes, and then she gets the treat. Now I'm gonna start to get her doing under as well. You see I made my leg a little higher, so she has to jump a little bit more to get over, but this allows me to also, whoa, drop the treat. That's bad trainership, all right? Also to lure her under my leg, right? So I can go over or under. So here we go again, I have my treat, and we go over, she gets a treat. I go here, I have my treat, and I go under, and she gets a treat. Excellent. Now in time, what I do is I remove the treat, over, yes. 
from my fingers, I mean, under. Ah, tricky dog, over, yes, under, hey, under, yes. Now, some of you will have difficulty where your dog will want to go around your foot, especially when you say over, they want to go to the outside. I see that a lot, and there's a little trick that we can use in order to make sure that our dog goes where we want them to go. So if I go up to a wall, and I put my foot against a wall like this, that takes away the dog's ability to go outside, and then from here I could lure over. Excellent. Okay, so this is phase three of, um, of over and under, right? Um, this is where we start to use props and other things. Over there, you can see I have a broomstick and two chairs. Um, if you're a professional dog trainer for 10 years, you might have these cones and uh, this thing that's made just for this. Um, but either way, they will both work. Um, I was told to get lower, so I have to be all the way low, like I'm itty bit here, all the way down low. Am I, am I in the frame? I'm here. All right, good. So I'm in frame. Here, here we are. Low enough. All right, so over, under, using props. Here we go. Itty bit. Let's go. I'm going to start in the chair because this happens to be here, and it's, uh, it makes it easier. So I start in the chair here. Once again, I have my treat in between my fingers, and I go like this, and she goes right over. Excellent. This is our first time that we've ever worked on it with these props. I have my treat in between my fingers underneath it. Good, I have to move fast with Itty Bit because Itty is a very fast dog. So I show her the treat and I go underneath it. Good. I might also have two treats in both hands um, so that way I could lure her over. Good, under. Good, over. Good, here's your treat. Very good, so I could get more out of it, right? Good job. So now let's see what this looks like. Good job, over. Good, good girl. Very good. Good job, under. Yes. And in time I won't have to over, get as low. Good job, sweetie. Excellent, under. That's not under, under. Help her, under. Yes. So she still requires a little bit of help with this. So if I really want to tire my dog out, what I want to do is I want to have her jump as much as possible, as quickly as possible, right? So that's going to make her the most tired. So if I go over, 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 over. Yes, good job, excellent. Very good, ready, over, excellent. Over, 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 over. Over, 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 over. So that is a lot of jumping. And this dog, she's a very high energy, high food motivated dog. But in a half an hour from now, she's going for a nap. Ready? Here we go. Over, 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 over. Over, 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 over. That is actually pretty hard to do. Um, to get a dog to do something, a repetitive action like that, over and over and over again, that's gonna mentally, also mentally exhaust your dog. Right, so those are things to think about. Ready, sweetie? Over. So the big takeaways from today's episode is that a fulfilled dog and a dog that is engaged with is a lot easier to get along with at home. Today we talked about luring which is a way to access your dog's mind and through luring we could get your dog to spin, to jump over and go under and to touch your hand which will tire your dog out and make it much easier for you to maintain peace in your home. If you like what you see here today, then definitely give us a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel. If you'd like to learn more about Argos Dog Training, check the description below and you will see links to our website and also to our social media accounts. Until the next time, enjoy your day and enjoy your dog. Today we're going to show you how to kill flies with towels. Can you explain to the camera again why towels are extremely good for jobs like this? They're really wide and they're light and they get really wide and they're usually heavy enough to kill any fly, um, even with a touch. Where's the, where's the fly go?